So here's another trick we have. So how many of you guys have hitters that tend to not get their feet to the ball? Yeah, we all do. And they're either hitting off balance here, or they're hitting way out in front of them, or hitting way back here. So we found kind of a trick to, you know, when you verbalize that, you can tell them over and over again, get your feet the ball, get your feet the ball, and they don't necessarily feel it. So one way we started doing that is we started using elastic. I noticed this was up here. Um, can you pop that elastic up to the red dot? I think you can jump high, let's see. Or to the red. Yeah, perfect, right there. So we'd start out maybe here and say, okay, now you guys have to hit over the elastic. Can't touch the elastic, okay? Just go through one cycle. Okay, that got under the elastic. Uh, touched it a little bit. Don't want to touch it. Thank you. There we go. That was good. Tip the elastic a little bit. I'm going to get it over it. Got over it. We're all the way around. So what we've had is like with, with Megan, she tends to, to really be late to the ball, which is good. I like that. But her feet are well behind the ball. So you're hitting way out here, which brings the contact point lower. And it sometimes limits killing me here. Limits the shots you can hit. So we want to get your feet the ball. So now, again, without much feedback, I would just say, hey, we got to get over the elastic here. So work your feet, get your feet to the ball so we can hit the highest point possible. Um, what's your name? Brianna. Brianna did a great job. She got all the way to the ball. She hit the ball at a really high point because her feet were there. So one more time, let's get over the elastic. So we got to this in a different way with a kid that we had, I think I, all the time I coached, we had two ACL tears. Um, so we were pretty lucky, but we were very careful over 40 years. Um, and Elsa Stegman was a great player. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. Elsa. Sorry. Um, and, and she, in her junior year, jumped, hit a ball at game point, on, I think, at Nebraska, and landed on her left leg, tore her ACL, and we tried to get her to land well. So you can get them to hit a higher over it to to make their approach be better. Another way to do it is to actually take kids out of drills when they land on one. Because if you have to land on two, all of a sudden you locate to hit better. Mm -hmm. Great athletes, the be better they are athletically, usually the worse it gets, they just approach and jump to where the ball is because they're so athletic they can, but then they can't land right. If we make them land well, they will locate better to hit, hit higher, hit here instead of here, because you have no choice. So rather than say, you have to, you, you know, you uh, have, we want you to locate better. Make them go over something and they will have to locate better. Make them land better so it's like an indirect teaching method. Well, it's interesting that, and I've got your name already. The Brie, you know, it's interesting because Brie of these hitters, which, who's, are you the tallest hitter here? No? Have you always been one of the smaller outside hitters, maybe, that you've had to compete against? Yeah. yeah. I find that often, uh, so often my smaller attackers are the ones that have the best mechanics to get into the ball because they've had to hit high. They've had to really maximize that versus the really athletic kids that can jump there or maybe hit the ball out in front or the, or the really tall kids. They've gotten away with it. You know? So I think, again, tricking them in a sense Instead of just saying, hey, get your feet there, get your feet there, get your feet there, and they can't really understand what that means body awareness-wise, but we throw an obstacle up or we throw a, um, a mandate in that, hey, you've got to land or you're out, it's amazing how all of a sudden the result you want appears because of the, this kind of uh, situation.